Hi everybody, Carolyn Williams with Money Reverse here. I am here with episode three, eight financial goals that every Christian should have. So if you missed episode one and two, watch them here. They're right here on the Money Reverse page. Episode one was income goals. So we'll, every Christian needs to set some income goals for their household. And episode two was your lifestyle goals. Episode three, we are going to talk about giving goals. So giving goals, we all know that the word says it is more blessed to give than to receive. That's found in Acts chapter 20, verse 35. So with that, giving is something that is just a part of us. You know, it is interesting when we give, there's just something inside of you that just feels good. <laughs> you feel you feel good and you should because giving is that that inert desire that instinct that the Lord has put in all of his children and so for that reason you feel extra good when you give because you are connecting into the spiritual side of you so instead of just seeing what happens or being motivated by what is said in church to determine what you give and how much to give and when you give, we should set goals for our giving. Now, contrary to popular belief, you probably think that with a business, a page, a ministry called Money Reverse, which is reversing the substandard conditions in the body of Christ using the Christian biblical principles as a guide, you would probably think that I say you need to give everything to the church. Ah. <laughs> that is not my philosophy at all. That's not my philosophy. Giving to the church is a part of what we should do. But when you look at the scripture, it talks about giving in so many ways. There's three ways that I'm going to say I found that are so prominent in the Bible. And the first is giving to the poor. If you look through scripture, the Lord God talks about and all of the prophets talk about the poor in so many ways. It says the poor will always be among you. There are special giving instances that pay for widows and orphans especially. And also, look at a lot of Deuteronomy scriptures, it talks about giving to Levites. Those were the people that were called to minister the word. Giving to strangers. Those are people that you don't know that may have a hard way. And giving to the fatherless. So in all of those scenarios, that is giving to individuals that may not have a way to sustain themselves otherwise. So that is a big part of what we see in the Bible. And so that is a call that we have. There were many instructions in the word that talked about giving to the poor. One that is so prominent and probably all of us as Christians know is when it talked about harvesting, leaving some of the harvest behind on purpose so that the poor can come and have some to eat to, to their fill. So again, and there, that happens in so many ways. So giving to the poor is one goal that you should have as a part of your giving goals. So if you say, okay, if, if your church gives to the poor, you can say that is good enough for you. But for me, it's not. Because I feel like I am called specifically to give to the poor. And in addition to giving to my church. So I do find those those ministries that 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 just makes my heart beat fast, and we'll talk about that in a little bit when we talk about the other type of giving. But giving to the poor, that should be a part of your giving goal. Again, eight financial goals that every Christian should have. Now, another part of your giving goals should be giving to the building of God's kingdom. And this is giving to the church and to the building of spreading the gospel, teaching and serving others in the name of Jesus Christ. That is a big part of what we, we should give to as well. Now, this is the part that we hear about in church a lot. You know, Malachi uh, cha chapter 3, starting at verse 8, will a man rob God? Malachi chapter 10, you know, bring your tithes to the storehouse. If I hear that one more time, I think I'm going to scream. <laughs> 
not that it's the scripture is not good, but that is the only way that I hear a lot of our churches teaching about giving. So I want to talk about giving in other ways as well. But one thing I want to say is we should tithe. I am a tither. 10% of my increase goes to the building of God's kingdom. That is a practice that I have. That is your reasonable service. So now one thing I want to make sure there's two things about tithing is tithing is your reasonable service. That is just expected as a Christian. That is not something that you need to brag about. It is not something that you need to get a pat on the back about. And it is not something that, this is just not something above and beyond that makes you, you know, puff up in your chest. So this is just your reasonable service. Think of it like saying, if you got up and bragged about brushing your teeth every day, you know, I brush my teeth today. I'm a, te I'm, I'm a tooth brusher. <laughs> That's, tithing is just your reasonable service. This is something that it is expected that all Christians do. This should not even be a debate. So with that, I want to I want to not help you to not look at tithing as something because you do it as something you brag about, not at all. The second thing about tithing is I want us to know that tithing is not the if then else of having your finances together. Sometimes I, I hear or I know that we think as Christians that because you tithe, your financial life is going to be okay. The Lord is going to just take care and bail you out of every scenario you have when you have some mistakes with your finances. Ah. The Lord can and the Lord will. But I want you to know that there are many, many, many other instructions in the Word that talk about money and some of those I'm giving with this eight uh, goals, financial goals that every Christian should have. So it is not, tithing is not the do all and, and make it all work because you tithe. It is definitely your reasonable service. I am a tither and I want all of my Christian brothers and sisters to be tithers. But trust me, there are many more instructions in the word that we must do in order to have a healthy financial life. You know, the Lord says, this is what the Lord told me, Carolyn, I don't have to work a miracle every day. I should not have to work a miracle every day for everyday things to happen in finances. You're going to have days in which you have a dark day financially. You're going to have those dark seasons, and that's where savings come into play. You know, you're going to have scenarios where you will need to uh, give more than you had expected. Those seasons happen. So again, Tithing, giving to the building of God's kingdom is the second area of your giving financial goals. Now, again, giving goals, the third area that I want to talk about is giving to your passion. Now, let me tell you one of my, my philosophy here. God has built each of us and made us so unique in our personalities and he's also placed so many things deep in you that are a part of you and that those are your promptings to operate in the way that makes you and your spiritual life and your natural life, again, come together, being a person of integrity. So when I say giving to your passion, what is it that makes your heart beat fast? It does not have to be religious or spiritual at all. So something that makes your heart beat fast that's probably something that God has called for a special calling for you. Teaching this Christian biblical principles is something that makes my heart beat fast. This is, I know, a calling that God has given me. So I invest a lot of time and a lot of money, a lot of teaching. I give to this. So again, I say, I don't think that all the giving should go to the church. Giving to your passion. So let me kind of give you some scenarios of people that I know that have different passions. And again, all of them are not uh, spiritual or religious in nature. You know, I know people that have a passion for uh, helping the homeless, that help for helping cancer research or AIDS research or cancer support, AIDS support, uh, disaster, disaster relief. If there's a hurricane or a tornado that damages the land, there's people that drive miles and and just really have a passion for working with those agencies. I know people that have set up job hunting networks because that is just their passion. 
helping people to find jobs. You know, I, animal cruelty, there's people that say, you know, my heart beats fast when I see animals uh, treated cruelly uh, in a cruel manner, so I am going to volunteer and give money to that. Uh, there's people that say, you know, they want to save the whales, save the dolphins. Again, their heart beats fast for that. I know someone who has a passion for helping the elderly, being an advocate for the elderly in nursing homes. People that have a passion for mental health, single moms. The list is endless, but the key here is to find your passion, and that is also what you should give to. Again, as we're talking about giving goals, this is a part of what I want you to do. Look at giving to those three areas, giving to uh, the poor, giving to the building of God's kingdom, and giving to your passion. So again, this is part of the giving goals that I want you to consider. Again, eight financial goals that every Christian should have. So now that we know about giving goals, let me kind of tell you the steps that you need to take. Number one, look at what you gave last year. Assume we're setting a one-year goal. Look at what you gave last year. Tally it up. Is it satisfactory for you? Does your giving reflect your passion in this area? Does your giving to the poor reflect that you are doing your part in God's instruction to serve the poor? Does your giving to God's kingdom reflect your passion for, for your faith in God and his word and in his church? Does your giving reflect that? And then the last giving for your passion, those things that you find that just make your heart beat fast, what did you give in those areas? And is that satisfactory to you? If it is, then your goal is to maintain and do the same thing as you did last year. If it's not, then I want you to look at what would, what would make you feel better about your giving this year in all of those three things. Again, giving to the poor, giving to the building of God's kingdom, his church, and also giving to your passion, those things that make your heart beat fast. So again, set that goal and make sure that it's going to help you smile when you look back at what you gave. Because again, giving is those, that thing that God has instinctually put in us. And when you do it, you just feel good. I, I can't explain. You know what I'm talking about. If you know what I'm talking about, give me a heart here. Let me know. Carolyn, we know what you're talking about when you say giving just makes you feel good. So if you know what that is, just give me a heart right now and just say, Carolyn, yeah. Because that's just an inherent part of what God has put in us. So another thing that I want you to remember about giving. When you are giving to a, a tax-deductible organization, hi, Joanne, and hi, Shay, thank you so much for joining me. When you are giving to a nonprofit organization, 501c3, or a church, even if a church has not filed for 501c3 status because they are a religious organization, they don't have to. But that is the, that, this is the only thing that's left in our tax code in which you get a dollar for dollar deduction. Think about it. You look at how much tax you owe. Suppose uh, they pulled all your taxes together and they said you owed $100 in taxes. What if you go and give $100 to your church or your or 501c3 organization? Then that deduction takes away from what you owe and your tax is zero. So with that, giving is also good for your finances in terms of your tax liability. So again, this is just, it all around giving is just a good thing. So again, look at how much you gave last year. Look at those things that are important to you. And, and definitely give, keep track of everything you're giving for tax reasons. Now, if you are giving more than $250 at one time to a charitable organization, church or charity, then you are going to need a receipt specifically from that organization. Having your canceled check is not enough if it's more than $250. The IRS is going to want you to have a receipt that has that, in, that organization's name on it, exactly how much you gave, and then there's certain words that they want to say to say they, you did not receive any products or services as a result of this giving, that it was a monetary gift. 
So with that, I, I find that a lot of small churches don't provide those receipts, and I have many times had to call back to small churches and organizations and say, can I get a receipt? I, I'm kind of known for going and making large gifts. I, I'm, a, I'm a big giver. I'll, I'll go and you know give a large amount, definitely more than $250, but I find that I have to call back and say, uh, excuse me, I need a receipt for that. And so with that, when you're giving more than $250 at one time, get a receipt. You're going to need that if you're ever audited by the IRS. Now, if you are a small church or part of the administration of a small church, please know that this is an IRS rule and you can send a specific letter to the individual and their specific wording. If you want to know exactly what it needs to say, I can send you an IRS brochure about that. If you look on my website, Money Reverse, I have a blog post that says you need a receipt <laughs> and I explain that. And But if you also just send everybody that gave to you that year an annual statement, that takes care of it right there because an annual statement serves the same purpose. So if you are administrator of a small church, just go ahead, just say, let's send everybody a receipt, an annual statement for their giving, especially if they gave more than $250 at one time. The larger mini ministries that I give to, if I give more than $250 at a time, I get an email receipt the, the next day. If I go to church and get, next week I get, a, I get something in the mail or an email that, with, that, with that specific letter. That's good. A lot of organizations are doing that now. So again, the third financial goal that everybody, every Christian should have is giving goals. And that's what I've been talking about here. If you have any questions, just let me know. I'm more than happy to answer your questions now. Or if you're watching this on the replay later, just post your questions here. And if this has been beneficial to, to you, just give me a, a thumbs up to say, Carolyn, we like this. This is helping us. And so this is going to help me to, to plunge, plunge right on through and get to those eight financial goals that every Christian should have. Any questions? I see the Joanne joined and Shay joined. Hey, ladies, how are you? <laughs> give, me, give me a thumbs up or a heart and let me know that you're there. And uh, let me know if you have any questions. And if you have not watched the other episodes of Eight Financial Goals that Every Christian Should Have, watch them here on the page. They're here. I, I'm doing this every day. So I will be back here tomorrow at 8 p.m. Central Time for eight financial goals that every Christian should have. I'm doing this eight days in a row. Tomorrow will be day four, and we will tackle another financial goal. Now, I'm going to post in, in this link, I'm going to put a picture that kind of has a summary of everything that I said here. So if you want to take some notes, you can take notes there. So again, it's Carolyn Williams with Money Reverse. It is my passion to live, to teach, and to coach managing money, following Christian biblical principles, and it is my pleasure to serve you. I will see you tomorrow at 8 o'clock Central Time. Bye.